Let's receive right now our fresh manna from heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, we're so grateful that we're your children, and we thank you, Father, that you've given us your word to grow by, to nourish us, to build us up, to give us faith, to instruct us in righteousness. Father, we're just so grateful that we are your children and that you are our Father. And Father, I thank you right now that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, and Father, that every person has a listening ear and a receptive heart, and that this word goes forth as light, for the entrance of your word gives light, and it goes forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, and accomplishes in every person, every one of us, what it is sent to do now in Jesus' name. And now let's confess by faith the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. And Jesus is Lord over my nation. Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. And now let's acknowledge our reception of the Word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you open my ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you give me perfect understanding of all things. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that this word has free course in my mind and in my heart, and that by faith, Father, and with your help, I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only. I thank you, Father, that I have what the word says I have. I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do in Jesus' name. And you are to me what the word says you are. Praise God. And you know the word says that he is our heavenly father and that he loves us and that nothing can separate us from his love. The word tells us also what he says about himself. This is who he is. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, slow to anger, abundant in goodness, abundant in goodness to all. He is abundant in goodness to you and to me. So say that right now. The Lord is abundant in goodness to me right now in Jesus' name. You know, in Jeremiah 33, one of the scriptures says, and, and I love verse 3 because he says, Call unto me, and I will answer you. So he says, You call, I will answer, and show you great and mighty things that you don't know, that you know not. But then later on, he says, The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Listen to this. The voice of them that say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Praise God. So, And then he says, And with them that bring the sacrifice of praise. Well, then in Hebrews, by the Holy Spirit, he says, let us offer unto him the sacrifice of praise. That is, well, let's see, it says by him, by Jesus. It's by Jesus, only by Jesus that we even are able to praise our Heavenly Father. It's only by Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb that we can go boldly to the throne of grace. So by Jesus, let us offer to him right now the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And one of the Psalms that David wrote was, Oh, that men would praise him for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
So let's just do that right now. Father, I praise you for your goodness to me and to my family right now in every area of our life. I praise you, Father, for your goodness to this nation. I praise you, Father, for your goodness to me and your wonderful works to me in Jesus' name. And you know what? As we praise God for his goodness, then his goodness manifests because that's a way of calling things that be not as though they were. But we praise him for his goodness continually. Well, the Holy Spirit has been ministering and feeding us on the Word of God concerning His love for us and now His love in us. And we, He took the time to teach us on 1 Corinthians 13 that this is who we are. As we take that Word and we put it in our mouth, then we become that. That's how we sow the word into our heart. And that's how we become what the word says we are, by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. So let's just acknowledge that together right now. As I say it, you say it. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I endure long, and I am patient, and I am kind. I am never envious of anyone for anything. I envy not. I am dead to envy. I am never, uh, and nor do I boil over with jealousy. I am never jealous or envious of anyone. I am never boastful or vainglorious. I am never arrogant conceited or inflated with pride over anything because I am dead to pride, but I am alive to God's humility. His humility is in me. I am humble-minded. I am meek and lowly in heart. I don't have anything that I didn't receive from him. Everything came from him for which I give him praise and glory. I am never rude or unmannerly, and I never behave myself unbecomingly. Love, God's love in me, does not insist on its own rights or its own ways, for I am not, I am never self-seeking, never. I am never touchy, fretful, or resentful. I take no account of an evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I forgive. I bear up under anything and everything that comes. I am ever ready to believe the best of every person. I do not rejoice in injustice or in righteousness, but I do rejoice when right and truth prevail. I never fail. And yesterday the Holy Spirit showed us in 2 Peter chapter 1 that besides this, giving all diligence, we add to our faith. One of the things we add to our faith, <coughs> excuse me, is this agape love, this love feast. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the characteristics of God's love that is not only to you, but that is in you toward others. And the first one is, that God's love is a powerful, powerful force. God is love. And we know that, that God is full of power. Well, his love in you creates that same power in you. God's love is a powerful force. And that love is in you right now. You are the love of God. Say that. Say, I am the love of God. So in Romans chapter 8, he says in verse 31, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely Give us all things.
things. Then he says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He says, no, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And listen to this, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor any nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us and put your name in there is able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord well then that same love that is to you is also in you and as you love people with that same love then nothing can separate you from that love that is going flowing out from you first of all to god then next to your spouse and to your children and to those that are around you the love of god in you is that kind of power the love of god that is flowing out of you toward all people will enable the power of god in their lives and the next thing is that God's love is constant. So God's love is a powerful force. It is a powerful force in you. And the second thing is God's love is constant. In James 1, 17, he says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You know, I use that for each child that is born into this family, that they are a good and perfect gift from our Father, that every child is born perfect with um, every part of their body, inside and out, their mind, their eyes, their ears, their, of course, I always pray that they're beautiful. And you know what? God hears and answers all of my prayers. Praise God. That, um, that they have a perfect heart, perfect circulatory system, perfect, um, all of their organs are perfect. They have all of their fingers and toes and they're in the right place and that every child is peaceful, contented, obedient, uh, but every child is born baby, that they are uh, good sleepers, good nursers, good, just good and perfect gifts, and a blessing to their parents and everybody they come in contact with. So these are things, you know, it's amazing what you can get out of one verse. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no burying, neither shadow of turning. So that's the point we're going to go to, is there is no burying in him. No burying, not even a shadow of turning in him. He is good all of the time if we will just believe that and acknowledge that with our mouth. Because we're gonna have, you're gonna have what you believe and say, I'm gonna have what I believe and say. So I believe and say that every child in this family is a good and perfect gift. I believe and say that everything that comes to me is good and perfect in Jesus' name. Even when I believed God for this home, I said, Father, that it is perfect, it is good and perfect, and that it is move-in ready because I didn't desire to do different things to it, which other people may desire to, you know, to do their own thing, but that's okay. I desired for this to be a good and perfect home, and um, 
one of the things that I prayed for, I said, Lord, I love landscaping, but I don't know anything about it. So I believe that it's already beautifully landscaped in Jesus' name. And it was. And this person had just done an amazing job with the rock work and with the landscaping, having something blooming at all times of the year. So, you know, it's just up to you to ask him for everything to be perfect in your life. Well, I didn't intend on getting on this perfect, but I will tell you that in Psalms 138.8, the Lord will perfect, make perfect everything that concerns you. So anytime you pray for something, then ask, for, ask the Father that he makes it perfect. David said this, he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like hind's feet and sets me upon my high places. In Hebrews, he says, Now the God of peace, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. God is a perfect God. And you know what? He will make things perfect in your life. And it doesn't take him long to do it. He is God. So there is no shadow of turning in him. So in us, the love of God in us, then we are constant also. As we acknowledge that, you know, the love of God in me is constant. Therefore, I am the same all of the time. And that's what he says in, um, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. He says, for I am the Lord, I change not. I change not. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same. We call him the same. The same as what? The same as he walked on the earth. The same as he was from the beginning. The same as he was to the children of Israel. The same to keep his promises. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so now we have the love of God on the inside of us so that every day we are constant. We are the same. We are steady. We are stable. We are the same all of the time. His love in us flows through us all of the time to him, to our spouse, to our children. That love is always the same and nothing changes us from who we are and that that love is operating in us. First Corinthians 13 is the same in us to every person. So there is no varying in his love for you and there's no varying in his love in you. Now listen to this, and I know I've shared this, but this is so good for you to, to be reminded of, for us to be reminded of, that God will never love you any more than he does right now. And he will never love you any less than he does right now. Nothing you do good can make him love you any more, and nothing you do bad, which I believe we don't do bad things, but nothing that you can do will make him love you any less. Why? Because he is love. And that is good news. And that is a truth to establish in your heart that he loves you because he is love, not because of you. And, you know, the word tells us that he, that we weren't beget by the will of man or by the will of our flesh, but only by God, that it was him. It was him that loved us so much that he sent Jesus. We didn't even know we needed a savior until Jesus came. And I'm just so grateful to him. And I thank you, Father, right now for that and that you drew us to yourself. So, but after you're born again, his love remains the same for you. And now because of his love, you can receive all of the benefits of salvation. Well, now that same love is in you. So 
this love in you toward your family is the same. Nothing they do for you can make you love them anymore. Nothing they do, if they happen to slip up and mess up, will make you love them any less because now that love in us is a steady love. And since love is a powerful force, you know that love opens the door for God to do mighty things in whoever you are loving with the love of God. And it's so vital for that love to be in your home, first of all, that your home is an arena of the love of God. In 1 John 4, verse 16, he says, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. God is love. He says, We have known and believed this love that God hath to us. Now I'm going to add to that. We have known and believed this love that God has in us, that he is in us, because everything in the kingdom comes by faith. So Father, in Jesus' name right now, let's just say this, say Father, in Jesus' name right now, I thank you that this love, your love in me, flows out from me to every person and that it is the same all of the time that I am the same because of your love that is in me that this love in me is constant that I love regardless of what a person does good or does bad I love your love flows through me to my family today in Jesus' name. Your love in me is the same all of the time. Father, put that in the forefront of my mind. Let that love, Father, be in me the same as it is in you and flows out of me. And Father, I thank you that this love is a powerful force in me. Thank you, Father, that this love is constant in me. It is the same. Just like you are the same to me, you are the same in me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I just bless you for it, Father. So, I just want to praise God for him revealing the power of this love to us. And again, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear or anxiety or care or worry or apprehension or tension. That is my amplification of it but he has given to us the spirit of power the spirit of his love and the spirit of his sound mind and as it we acknowledge those things then it's manifested in us and one more that just came to my mind is in jude he says but you beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith he says, keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in his love. Keep yourselves in his love. And so keep yourself in his love and keep yourself with the love of God in you. And he says, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Well, this word, I believe, um, is growing up in you mightily right now. In Jesus name and that God just all through at the day just gives you revelation of his love in you in Jesus name